Okay, hi, I'm Tom Graybill, and uh, it was a privilege for me to be here this morning and bring God's Word on the Doctrine of Atonement. I want to give you a brief recap of what we preached about this morning, and so you can uh, hear it and be guided in your discussion together. So, set the stage by just wondering about broken promises and the impact of broken promises on us, typically causing, causing pain, frustration, and the loss of trust in the relationships that are important to us. We need to realize that not only have others done this to us, but unknowingly we've done it to other people. We've inflicted pain, frustration, and the loss of trust in relationships near and dear to us as well. Sometimes that was intentional, other times very unintentional, but all the same, it's contributed to the chaos and brokenness of this world. We make big promises all the time. Like when we get married, when we were baptized, made profession of faith, we gave our word to things in which we really didn't fully understand what was expected of us. Yet it doesn't diminish the covenant at all. We are expected to continue to live into this covenant throughout our life. And then we mess up. And sometimes when we mess up and we realize that nothing can be done about it, what's done is done, we're filled with shame and guilt and misery and hopelessness or we become defensive and we say it wasn't my fault it's everybody else's fault in the midst of this chaos is there any hope for us and that's where the doctrine of atonement comes in and provides a very important message for us today the atonement at one meant means a covenant which brought two people together as one has been severed and separated. Is it possible for those two to become one again? The atonement says yes. Satisfaction or reparation for a wrong or an injury, amending it is possible only through Jesus Christ. We looked at Luke chapter 23 of Jesus on the cross surrounded by two criminals and then Jesus' ridiculous words, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. How can somebody offer forgiveness when they've been treated so poorly? We also discussed another leader, great leader from the Old Testament, Moses, from the 32nd chapter, in which Israel was behaving very inappropriately and broke the covenant of God to which God was angry, called them stiff-necked, and wanted nothing to do with them. And after Moses had settled down, he came to them, and said, so let me go see if I can make atonement for you. Again, ridiculous. But when it comes out of your own sense of owning your brokenness and realizing the forgiveness that you've received, you are compelled to want to offer that second chance to somebody else as well. So finally, we talked about Stephen, a lesser known leader in the church, but very important, who understood the doctrine of atonement very well. And when the religious people were hurling stones at him, and he was about to breathe his last. He uttered these words, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. In the hopes, some listening to him there would be impacted by the power of the atonement, of forgiveness, of grace, realize the error of their way, and be transformed back into the image of God. Friends, we live in a broken world filled with broken people who break their promises and break trust and contribute to the further brokenness of this world. If that were the end of the story, it would be hopeless. But because of the doctrine of atonement, there is hope. Moses atoned for the sins of the Hebrew people. Stephen atoned for the sins of the Jewish people. And Jesus has atoned for the sins of people, past, present, and future, all times. So we said the spirit-filled life is a life of atonement, receiving God's free gift and offering, offering it to others, as ridiculous as that may seem. So I want you to discuss the doctrine of atonement, these three stories in your time together, and deepen your understanding of the powerful impact of grace, forgiveness, and atonement on yourself and others, and hopefully this world. Friends, now it's time to engage in some meaningful conversation around the theme of the morning. I'm going to give you the main question, but I invite you leaders to use the follow-up questions also assigned to deepen the discussion and better understanding of the topic of atonement. Main question number two, share a time when a promise was broken and what was the impact?
Main question number three. Why are big promises so hard to keep? Main question four. What role does shame play when we fail to keep a promise and let others down? And main question number five, based on this study of what in your life is the Holy Spirit encouraging you to repent of to receive the full benefit of Christ's atoning sacrifice on the cross? Well, friends, it's been good to be with you this week in your study of the atonement powerful doctrine of the scripture that has the ability to breathe hope into a hopeless world. So may God bless you as you further your understanding of Jesus Christ, his grace, his forgiveness, and the hope that you have to offer this world. God bless you.